And a good afternoon to you. This, I'm Huey Poplock. This is the Central Florida Computer Society Windows Special Interest Group, or WinSIG, for Sunday, June 9th, 2019. We've got a lot of items to cover today. We have uh, people online as well as people uh, uh, in the audience at the Castleberry uh, Library in Seminole County, Florida. Uh, I'm in Bradenton, Florida, about 120 miles from that group, and we've got people online from Idaho, from Canada, from uh, Phoenix area or Arizona. I, Lee, I'm not sure where in Arizona you are. We've got some people here in, from Sarasota, from the Orlando area, and uh, one person at the meeting, so if the computer dies there, we at least got a, a backup to reconnect, thanks to Dick. And uh, uh, let's get started. I've got a lot to cover today. Uh, let's see, we're going to minimize this. And I want to bring up this. Now, every month we post the uh, the topics that are going to be covered, usually a couple of days before the meeting. Uh, and then I send out a newsletter with a list of the topics without the links, uh, as well as uh, an article of interest and some other information. Uh, if you are not receiving that, go to the website, fill out that uh, subscription. Uh, all we need is your email address, your first and last name, no other information. It's all handled by MailChimp, uh, so it should be secure. Uh, as long as they don't have a problem, I'm not in control of that, which makes it even more secure. <laughs> and uh, please uh, uh, sign up for that newsletter. I don't send it out, but usually once a month, unless there's something that really needs to go out or a, a, corre a major correction. But uh, uh, I will give you what we're going to cover, a reminder for the meeting and so on. So please go ahead and uh, make sure that you subscribe if you're not already. Let's get started. Let's talk about the Windows uh, uh, 10 update for, it's called 2019-03. Uh, it is the May update, and it's supposed to happen if you just keep checking your Windows update. It should show up there, and then you click on it, and it'll do the update. If if it doesn't show up right away, which it didn't on my uh, on this computer, my main desktop computer, or on my Surface, you can force it, or you can create some an installation media, and this is where you go to get it. The link, this uh, the first link on uh, the the WinSig page, will bring you to this page, and you'll see where it says update now. If you click that, it will start the update. Uh, if you want to download and create a, an installation, either USB or a DVD or an ISO file, you can do so by going and, and getting the download tool. And there's instructions here on using the tool to upgrade. Uh, and you go down farther, using the tool to create the installation media. tells you how to do that. And, and there's some more download options as well. So uh, if you have not gotten the update as a choice or it has not updated you automatically, you can, you can get it, uh, provided, of course, your system will do the update. But most of them will. I've not heard of anybody having uh, 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 an issue that they couldn't get the download but it is possible. So anyway, this is where you get it. And all you have to do is click on the Windows download on the meeting notes. Okay, what's in it? Well, I'm gonna to go to this website. Yeah, Clint said he uh, never did see that in his, uh, in his update page. He waited and then forced as I was showing and uh, uh, I did the same thing. That's how I had to get it. And he said uh, 32 gigabytes available space was required for the upgrade. Uh, 
on my surface I didn't have that I don't I think I only have a 64 gigabyte uh, drive in that to begin with uh, mm -hmm. but I had enough space on there that uh, uh, it, it for the surface that it knew that it would be able to take it. so this is an article from uh, a Windows 10 it's on PC world a PC world and and, and there's several magazines that they just have so many ads on them. I don't like uh, uh, using them. Let's see, I need to move. I have a, a menu here that I need to move out of the way because I want to do something. I'll move it down here. I hope I remember it's down there. Uh, and there are so many, and it may even start a video. Sometimes it starts it just by it being on the page and it's unresponsive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, and uh, go ahead and close it. And then I'm going to open up the Microsoft Edge development version, in other words, their test version. I hope this works, what I'm trying to do, and I'll show you when if it works. But I had an experience where it didn't work earlier today. Uh, let's see if we can do this and we bring up the same page. Now this is the, let's go ahead and full screen that on top of the other. And there it's good, it's working now. Now, do you see up here in this little box, it says reading view. What I like about this, and this is Microsoft Edge, and I tried to do some research this morning on it, and I couldn't find anything whether this is going to be included in the, the new Microsoft Edge or it's, they're going to leave it out. But you'll notice when I click on the reading view, it cuts out all the ads and all the crap that's on the page. And so just the information, the pictures are there. So let's go ahead now. Let's see, can I increase the size? That was what I did not test. And let's see if we can do that. Yes, it will allow us to do that. I thought the size might have had something to do with why I wasn't getting the reading view. So we've got a little bit larger. So the Windows 10 may update. These are some of the things uh, that it offers. Some badly needed improvements to Windows Update, a much speedier in search function. Uh, troubleshooters that solve problems on their own. There's even an updated emoji keyboard with symbols and uh, the more sophisticated Kaomoji. Uh, the best feature, however, is the cool new Windows Sandbox, and we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning, or this afternoon, I guess we are. Uh, the May 2019 update, uh, also known as 1903 or 19H1, may not officially be pushed to your PC until, okay, it, we got it. Some of us got it, some haven't yet. The Sandbox. Now, uh, for several years, uh, we had a speaker talk about Sandboxy several years ago at CFCS, and I know several members uh, have been using it for years. It's Sandbox IE, and it was a, a third-party program. Uh, I used it for many years, and then when I had to do a in reinstall of Windows on this computer, I just never installed it again. I, I don't know. I have no idea why. So uh, I don't have it. And so when I was testing the Windows Sandbox the last couple of days, uh, I didn't have that to interfere at all. So if you are running Sandboxy, uh, you want to make sure that you don't probably run the two of them at the same time. Anyway, Windows Sandbox stands out as a secure lockbox for testing new apps and, and sites. Uh, but not only uh, if you're running Windows, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, only if you're running Windows Pro or the Enterprise version. If you have Windows 10 Home, it is not available for you. You cannot get it. It is strictly for the Pro version or the Enterprise version. Uh, and so this is very important because if you go looking for it and you don't, and you have the Home version, you're not going to find it. Uh, you're aware that the virtualization is one of the key dif differentiators. Everything from a full-fledged Hyper-V virtual machine to the more purpose-driven uh, secure browser, Sandbox is somewhere in the middle. 
is simplified protected virtual windows. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to try to open it and hopefully uh, it will show up using Zoom on the screen, but we'll do that just after we go through this article. So the Windows 10 Sandbox is a pristine, secure Windows installation that's not linked to your account. It's essentially a barrier isolator for bad stuff that might harm your PC. Now, what are you going to use it for? It, to test something, to go to a website that you, you aren't sure whether it's going to cause some issues? Is it totally secure? I have not read anywhere where they guarantee it, but I would say most likely when what happens is when you close it, everything that you've done in it goes away. So if you've installed a program, if you've gone to a website, uh, everything goes away. It's, it's like running a, a different version of Windows within Windows. You can't even get, you don't even get to your files. Uh, your personal files on your computer. Uh, you've already learned not to mess with an app that might be malware. Uh, the same goes for a website. Sandbox changes the game. Now you can open a suspicious entity within Sandbox. If it is malware, it will remain trapped within the Sandbox virtual environment. And once you close the app window, everything disappears permanently. There's one exception. If you copy a downloaded file out of Sandbox and onto your PC or into your PC, it will remain. You'll need to be sure you haven't downloaded any malware. But that's the whole point of the Sandbox. Uh, you can use Sandbox to visit places on the web you might not normally go to and run apps within the protected environment. Don't use it as an excuse for piracy, though. Sandbox carves out a chunk of your CPU and memory to run. So the more memory you have, the better it's going to run and the more space it, or, or, or the more memory it will use and have available. That's giving you some, uh, but it's, it's a useful tool for testing. That system utility that's giving you some bad vibes or just browsing securely in places you shouldn't go. It doesn't uh, uh, m make it anonymous, so beware of that. Uh, you want a deeper dive in the sandbox, there, there is a sandbox tutorial, and the link is in this article. Uh, we'll come back to sandbox at, at the end of this article, and I'll go ahead and open it up so you can see what it is. Uh, Windows Update tries a lot harder. Uh, so that's one of the things it does. Uh, in addition of an update imminent alert to your taskbar, it's... Uh, it slaps your head obvious and will certainly help mitigate the shock users can feel if an unexpected up uh, with an unexpected update. Uh, the emoji and symbols arrive, so there's different kinds of emo emojis that you can use. I'm not sure some of you, uh, some of us seniors don't use them, but the younger people seem to. But they're fun, and sometimes uh, uh, in text messages they're neat to have, and sometimes on, uh, on Facebook next to your uh, comments, uh, it's nice to add them. And this just gives you some more things that you can do. Okay, and search separates, uh, speeds up. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a major difference. Uh, the other major shift within Windows 10, 2019, uh, 03, uh, 1903, the update is Microsoft's decision to give Windows Search pride of place and sideline Cortana. In other words, it separates the search from Cortana. Previously, the search box served as an entry point for your day, tapping Cortana to summarize your calendar when you click on the empty search box. Now, both the traditional search and Cortana shortcuts, the Windows key plus S and Windows key plus C, open the search box. Uh, Microsoft may be uh, telling you that to use Hey Cortana to orally command your PC, but in the world that's increasingly frowning on something as basic as a voice call, this will uh, feature, will it be used? And this uh, author was doubtful. Uh, you'll notice equal tension between the 
search box and the more traditional means of hunting down files in your PC file explorer. Uh, Windows Search wants to be your gateway to all of the content on your PC and in the OneDrive cloud. Uh, so let's uh, let's see if there's something. Yeah, these are some pictures of what it is. I'm going to demonstrate it here in just a minute. Uh, let's see what this is. There's a catch though. While Windows Search hunted down photos and documents in a flash, it tends to ignore the smaller nitty gritty configuration file associated with a particular keyword. So it's it's not. Uh, it's a good article to read through and, and understand what some of the limitations are. And there's a new passwordless pin option uh, to simplify logins. Windows has traditionally given you the option of either logging in BC with a local account or a password or with a full featured Microsoft account ID that manages the information you've stored in the cloud. The update has a new twist and that's a passwordless account that uses your mobile phone as an authentication device. Although Microsoft hasn't really said why it added this third option, presumably it's to satisfy the younger mobile first workers who don't want to be tied down to a formal Microsoft account. For now, the, uh, the passwordless account can't be created on a, on a PC. Microsoft recommends that you insist instead download the mobile app, Office app like Word, then create your new account ID by tapping, typing your mobile phone number in the place of an email address. Confirmation and then authentication takes the place of a via SMS code sent to your phone. When you log into your PC with your new account though, Windows will encourage you to use a PIN or, or Windows Hello as you normally do. So what, what you're going to be able to do is use your phone to log into your Microsoft account or your PC. Uh, automated troubleshooting does more in the background. So there's some automated troubleshooting. And so you can find that under diagnostics and feedback. And I believe that's the end of this article. So let's take a look at a couple of these things. Oh, let's see. This was in there. We'll minimize this. So there's my desktop. And what we're going to do is I'm going to first go to uh, the uh, menu. And I want to go to Windows. And I want to go to Sandbox. I've already installed it. I did it this morning. And I'll show you how you do that in just a moment. From the article, there's a, a, a screen capture that makes it better than me doing it. So it's loading the Sandbox at this point. And that's the indicator there. It does, the first time it's going to take longer than the next. So be patient, because it's actually opening a whole, a whole new version of Windows on your computer. Hopefully, there we go. And you should see a copy of Windows here in a moment, and a desktop. It does take a few seconds, more than a few seconds, several seconds. There we go. And you can see that I have a different Windows window in the middle of my windows. I can full screen it. I'm not going to because I want you to realize that it, things are going on and I'm not sure what it'll cover up uh, that I may need to do some other things. So let's look at the start menu. Again, it takes a few seconds for all this to work. There we go. Amount of memory. I, I'm going to get to that, Stan. Okay. Uh, so hang in there. Thank you. Uh, so this is everything that's loaded. We've got some Windows things. 
We've got OneDrive, we've got Microsoft Edge, and that's pretty much it. Now let's go to our settings in the virtual in the sandbox in the virtual window here. And I want to go to system. And then I want to go down here to about. Now I have 16 gigabytes of RAM on this computer. What it's doing, it's taking a portion of that and creating my drive. And you'll see here that it's taking almost four gigabytes of my, my 16 gigabytes to create my virtual drive, my virtual window or version of Windows. <clears throat> if you only have eight gigabytes of RAM, it's going to obviously be less. Four, I believe it still will run, but it's going to be taking just a very small part. So it may be a lot slower and it may not do as much. Uh, so depending upon how much memory you have, and that's probably why it only works in Pro, is because most people who have Pro will have it, should have enough memory for it to run. But you'll notice that it gave it a different device. It, it gives it a different device name. It creates one. Uh, it does say it's it's Winter, Windows 10 Enterprise, 1903 version, installed on 522, and it gives the operation, and, and this is what it's running. So I can, within it, let's go ahead and just close that. I just wanted to show you that. Let me show you what, uh, on my own computer, you know, on the, on the full computer, the same information, just so you know that it's different. We'll go to system and about here. And this is my NUC computer, which I named NUC NUC. And you'll notice I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and that it's Windows 10 Pro 1903 and it was installed on 5.29 and, and then the OS built. So you, you, you do see that they are different versions of Windows. Now, going back to the virtual, I can go to Microsoft Edge. It is the original Edge, not the development one that's based on Chrome. Uh, eventually, I would suspect that they will update that because they'll probably be doing away with the current edge anyway once they make it. Now we've got a lot going on here because uh, don't forget we're recording, we're, dry, we're, we're, we're using Zoom in the background, but it's opening up a window. I'm at a window and then I can go to any website that I wish. I can open up a new tab go to that tab and go to any address that I want. So if I go to CF, CS, oops, CFCS, oops, org, and it's a wrong address. I type too many C's. I'm not sure what it's going to do now. I might have really confused it. There we go. It's doing it. And then you can see we can connect to websites using this virtual copy of Windows. I can go to any site that I wish. Uh, and then when I'm all done, all I have to do is come up. Let's see, do I want to close all the tabs? I close it. So I've closed off Edge, and now when I want to close the virtual Computer, is are you sure you want to close Windows Sandbox? Once Windows Sandbox is closed, all of its content will be discarded and permanently lost. So if I had downloaded something, it's going to go away. If I've installed something onto this version, it will go away. If I've uh, 
uh, saved a file or if I've done anything at all, it all will go away. And I say okay and it's gone. Now also, I mentioned in that article that in the search box and you'll see here, here's Cortana. Cortana is now a separate button. I'm going to I can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with the way you talk. Okay. I need your permission to help. Okay, and we're going to close that. So we've closed her. The search box now, when I click on it, it gives me some choices up here. Uh, here's some apps. Here's some searches that I've done. and uh, Or I can type whatever I want. I can type in uh, 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 reader. View uh, edge. And it will go to it. So that's my, so uh, the search box down here is working as a search box now. It's not Cortana. Cortana is separate. So I think that's, uh, that's a valuable change. And uh, what else was in that article? Let's go back to the article. Oh, I wanted to show you some of the uh, uh, pictures in there. Some of the graphics. And that was the box we saw. Uh, oh, what I didn't show you uh, in there, and I can do that with this. Is it going to let me open it? Yeah. The drive that it shows, well, I'm not sure what it's doing here. Uh, the drive that it shows is just the C drive, and it's a very limited C drive. It's one it created. And let's see, there was a, I thought, oh, I know it was farther up that I wanted to show you, and I don't see it here. It says how to, how to turn it on. Uh, Windows Sandbox tutorial. Anyway, there's a way to turn it on. And I thought there was a, a, a an article there that, uh, I'm sorry, a graphic that showed a, a screen capture of it. Okay, what's new in the recent Windows 10 updates? I think this is just more of what we talked about. But this is from Microsoft. Uh, you can paste from your cloud clipboard. Here's some of the emojis. Let's go ahead and make this larger. Uh, you can back up, uh, automatically back up your precious folders. Uh, Keep your documents, pictures, and desktop folders automatically backed up with OneDrive so they're protected even if you lose your PC. On the right side of the taskbar, select OneDrive and then more settings and do an auto save. So, uh, uh, so on the right side of the taskbar, let's see, select more. Okay, here. And we got right here, I hope you can see this. I'm clicking the one, the OneDrive icon and I'm right mouse clicking it. And I've got a, I got something that's blocking it. You don't see that. Let me just move it out of the way and move it out, out of the way and do that again. Okay, OneDrive's up to date, but what you'll have here is uh, some settings and there you can do a backup and you can actually manage your backup and you can go in and you can do some setup and tell it what you want to back up automatically on your OneDrive. Uh, you can also bring some of the Microsoft experience to your Android phone. 
Uh, you can make your pointer easier to see, so there's a, a, a better uh, under start settings, go to ease of access and then cursor and pointer and there's some settings you can change. So we'll do that, do start settings, ease of access. Well, the best way to do that is Well, let's go to ease of access, bright and brightness settings. But I don't let's see cursor and pointer. You've got some changes that you can make here, and change your cursor thickness. So if you want it thicker, that's the cursor, not your pointer. Change your pointer color, so you can make it white black. Make a change over what you're going or give it a color. Uh, let's change it to, I don't want a pink. <laughs> Pick a custom, let's make it red somewhere. Done. And I now have a red cursor, but I don't have the big one. But I wanna change the pointer size. I can make it really big. I'll leave this for a while. You know, it'll drive you nuts as I move it around. So that's handy. Some of you, uh, when you do presentations too, when you're pointing to things, now you'll be able to see my mouse. But if I move my mouse around while I'm talking, it really gets you. You're going to go dizzy. Okay, make uh, things larger on your screen. You can do that on your display. However, things are going to fall off on the edges when you do that, but you can play with that. Uh, use your snip and sketch to capture. I had, I did show snip and sketch in uh, either last month or a, a month ago. I keep it down in my uh, taskbar, and so it looks like this. It's replacing the, uh, the old, and I gotta remember what the name of it, it was called the snipping tool. And so if I do new, and I take a portion of this, and I have it tied, uh, well, because I've got it shut off, it's not working that way. So anyway, you got it here, you can do some markups, you can say okay, anything like that, and close it, and we'll close it. Continue, continue, and it goes away. Okay, and so those are some of the things that are uh, in, in greater detail and about the Windows update as well. Uh, Windows 10 makes wireless projection easy. I tried this earlier this week using my Surface in the living room, and I got it to work. So I added it to this list. I don't know if it was on the first list I sent out or not. But uh, there's a little video that goes with it. I'm going to play that video. How many times have you pulled out your phone to show off recent vacation photos or ended up having to watch your favorite movie on a teeny tiny laptop screen? Car cages just don't look so exciting at two inches tall. Hi, my name is Chi from the Windows Media Team. Did you know you can easily grow your screen with the magic of wireless projection in Windows 10? No green thumb required. Imagine being able to project what's on your Windows device to a larger screen that makes sharing your work, your memories, or simply your evening entertainment a breeze. Watch what you want, whenever you want, on a big screen by learning how to take advantage of Windows wireless projection. There are a lot of different devices you can choose to wirelessly connect to. Let me show you what you'll need to project from your laptop to a wireless display. First, You'll want to make sure your current device meets their requirements. Your laptop or tablet must have Windows 10 pre-installed to use wireless projection. You can even use your desktop PC if it has a Wi-Fi card in it. You can confirm your device supports wireless projection by pressing the Windows key and K. If your device doesn't support wireless projection, it will indicate so within this menu. Second, 
The device you want to wireless project to, your TV, projector, or even desktop monitor, must support Miracast. If you have a smart TV, wireless projection is most likely built in, or might require you to install an app, like LG ScreenShare, for example. Finally, if your Miracast receiver supports it, make sure you're projecting from and what you're projecting to are connected to the same network for the best performance. Each device manufacturer is different, but you can check networks by visiting the network settings on your device. For example, I have a Windows 10 laptop and an LG TV. I navigate to network settings in the menu and confirm that both devices are connected to the same network. Good to go. What if your TV doesn't support wireless projection? Consider investing in a Miracast dongle. It plugs into the back of your TV like a cable box or a Blu-ray player. Search Bing or hop over to the Microsoft Store. Just make sure that whatever you purchase is Wi-Fi certified for Miracast technology. Once you've confirmed that your device meets necessary requirements, press the Windows key and K to open the Connect menu. Windows will start searching for wireless displays and audio devices. This could be a conference room display, a TV, or another monitor. Select the display you want and Windows will connect to it and this is your laptop screen. Maybe you want to navigate across the projected screen or draw on it during your presentation. You can allow mouse, keyboard, touch, and pen input from this device to enable touch capabilities from your devices like Surface Hub. Wireless projection allows you to choose the right connection for the task. At the top of the screen, you'll see the control bar that shows the status of your connection. You can optimize it best to suit your activity. While the default mode is working, you can also choose gaming or watching videos. Don't worry, if you don't feel like switching back and forth between modes, sticking with working would be just fine for most activities. Done with your projection? You can simply disconnect your device from the control bar or from the connect menu. Even if you forget to do so, wireless projection will automatically stop as soon as you close your device or leave the room you're projecting in. We hope you found this video helpful. Please share your feedback and suggestions with us using the Feedback Hub by pressing the Windows key and F and select Display and Graphics, Wireless Display and Casting. Thank you for watching and have a great day. I had not been aware that you could do that. I don't know whether it's new with with this version of Windows 10, but I did try it, as I said, with my uh, smart TV in my living room and my uh, old Surface 3 that I've had for several years. Uh, and I was able to make them, and without a wire, without anything else, I was able to project it onto the t my six, uh, was a 50 inch TV uh, to show some things I was doing in Facebook to other people in the living room or to show some pictures. Uh, to share anything you want on your computer. You can do it easily without having to have a projector and, and, and do it to the wall. So this is something you might be able to do if your, uh, your computer user group has a large screen TV that you can use and not a projector and not a screen. Uh, you may be able, as long as it's a smart TV or, or a newer TV, you may be able to do it with just doing it wirelessly, connecting to the same network. Um, Yuri? Yes. A couple of points. Number one, I'm seeing at the very bottom of the screen, it does say to start projecting, press the Windows and the Windows key and the K, letter K. Yes. It doesn't work on this machine. On, on the Asus, nothing happens. Okay, I'm going to show you what happens when I do it on this one. Windows K. I get that. Can You're you see it? Yes. I have wireless turned off on my desktop because uh, I'm wired. So uh, I, I'm not going to play around with that. But uh, in the uh, on my Surface, that's all I have is, is wireless. Yep. Uh, as well as, uh, well, it's also connected at and t uh, but I could do it from, when you do this, the K, the Windows and the K key, that should come up. We if don't it, see anything. I'm not sure why. I, don't, I yeah. don't think you have a home version. 
and and I don't know whether that would make a difference or not. Well, it's a home version that I use on the uh, on my Surface anyway. So, or is it a Pro? I don't recall. So I'm not sure why you might have to do some checking, and you may have to turn something on. I don't know. I don't think this has Wi-Fi. You don't think it has Wi-Fi? I know the ASUS does not have Wi-Fi built in. Well, how are you connecting to me? Oh. <laughs> yes, it does. I was thinking there was a difference between connecting to a Wi-Fi device and, and receiving Wi-Fi through the library. You're absolutely right. Senior moment. <laughs> yep. Okay. You might want to check on that and play with it, but uh, sure. uh, it, it should be available. And again, I know you've got an update. You've done the update. Yes, I have. Now, you, you may have done a beta because you did it before it was released. That may need to be – well, you've been doing the updates, though. So I'm not sure why it's not working. There have been three interim updates after yeah. I did the major 1903. Yeah, I had one this morning, as a matter of fact. Okay, but I thought that was very interesting, and I got it to work. Uh, and, and, and most of – probably most of the people who were on, on the uh, uh, broadcast uh, online probably have notebooks uh, or laptops and can try this with their uh, smart TV or one of the more – one of the newer TVs to see if it supports Miracast, M-I-R-A-C-A-S-T. And what you do is uh, find the manual, and if you don't have the manual, get the uh, model number of your TV, and in Google, put the model of your TV, and then after the model number, you put in user manual. Don't go to any of the sites that want to charge you to do that. You should try to go to the manufacturer. So if you have an LG TV or you have a, <clears throat> a Toshiba TV or whatever brand, go to their website, put it, go to the support for your TV, and then ask for the user manual, and it should be available as a, as a PDF. You should be able to download it and then do a search on Miracast. And if it's, uh, if it's available for your TV and you have – uh, Wi-Fi on your laptop, you may be able to use this. Okay, the Windows Sandbox. Uh, there's another article about it. Let's take a look at that real quick or quickly. I think, was this the same article we looked at? It may be. Oh, yeah, this is the other article that does have, uh, I think this is the one that has the photo of yeah uh let's see yes here is the box that you to to set it up on your computer i'm going to make it larger here well that didn't work back up here double click come on There we go. Trying to do something. Well, let me just make this one larger and then it'll probably finish doing what it's trying to do. No, it's not letting me do anything. There we go. Okay, what you're going to go to is to, you're going to type in Windows feature in your search box and it will get you to it. And then what you, if you have the pro version or the enterprise version, you'll see where it says Windows sandbox and it most likely is unchecked. If you check it, it will install it and then ask you to reboot, and it will be then available. So it's not available by default if you have the pro version only. 
you have the home version of Windows 10, that will not show up in this uh, box at all. And again, what we want to type in is Windows features. Turn Windows features on or off in the control panel. And that's what it looks like when you bring it up. Obviously a lot smaller than the one I have on the screen. And you'll see that I have it now marked on, but this morning it was not marked. I clicked on the X and turned it on, then said okay. And once I said okay, it installed it. And then I had a reboot. And when I rebooted, I could go and all I have to do is go into the menu. Now remember, because it's a Windows and I've got a lot of programs installed, so I hit a letter, it brings up the dialer, I go to W, and then Windows Sandbox is right here. When I click on it, it opens it up. Okay, there are some issues with the May 2019 version. They're not major. This article tells you a little bit about what they are. Uh, number one, update doesn't always install. Uh, sometimes the sandbox feature is blocked. And let's see what else it says here. And I'm not sure, let's see. There should be a third one and I'm not sure. Uh, it did say here, let's see, there's an ad there. Let's close that. Uh, some users whose AMD processes are finding Windows update doesn't install at all or it freezes. And also I have read that if you have a USB drive plugged in or a USB SD card, you want to remove it when you do the update. Uh, because that may block it from installing. Once it installs, there is an update that fixes that issue. But that didn't install on my computer until after, or on my Surface, until after I installed the Windows. Then it did the update, and the update said, oh, it fixed that problem. So I'm glad that I, I took out the SD card, which is my D drive, on my Surface. My Surface has 64 uh, gigabytes of RAM, and that's it. That's the only drive it has. And so I put an SD card in, made it a D drive, and I have all of my data on that. Okay, let's see what we got next here. Let me check and see. Uh, let's see, where are my chat? Where's my chat box here? Where to go? I don't know. I see there's somebody left something here. Let me see if I can. Okay, Mike said, just tried the Windows K on his desktop and got the sidebar. No smart TV here, so uh, that are compatible. Okay. Uh, you might want to check and see if your TV has Mira cast in it. Uh, one of your TVs, Mike, uh, it may, but you'd have to check your user manual to find out. Okay, uh, for those of you who refuse to go to Windows 10 and are on an older version of Windows, Microsoft is doing a one-time update because there is uh, a, an issue that they think is so worthy that they are updating the older versions going back to XP, and they are begging you to do the update. There is a destructive attack, uh, and so update, whoops, come on, with all these ads. Uh, in a blog post uh, late Thursday, and I'm not sure what the date of this article was, but it's a week or two ago, members of the Microsoft Security Response Center cited findings, uh, uh, let's see, one million internet-connected computers remain vulnerable to the attacks. That indicates that those machines have yet to install an update Microsoft issued two weeks ago, patching against 
the so-called blue keep vulnerability, which is formally tracked as, and it's got a name, the exploits can reliably execute malicious code with no interaction on the part of an end user. The severity prompted Microsoft to take the unusual step of issuing patches for Windows 2003, XP, Vista, and Vista, which haven't been supported in four, five, and two years, respectively. So if you are running any of those, uh, you might want to go to Microsoft and, and heed their warning and update if you in, at all connect to the internet with that computer. And so there's more information there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because you should be on Windows 10 anyway. Okay, this past week, I found something that I think is an invaluable tool to many of us who are members of groups, whether it be a computer user group, a fraternal organization, a veterans group, uh, uh, any volunteer organization, nonprofit organization, or even a commercial, even a, you're, in, you're uh, an admin or it's part of your job to be able to promote or to create some kind of a poster or a flyer for some event, for something going on in the office, whatever. And we're not all uh, really good graphics people and, and aren't quite sure how to do these things. I found a website that will help you. First of all, I wrote an article that explains all about it. And it's on, it's a blog on my website and I do have some screen captures. But I'm gonna demonstrate it real quick uh, uh, here in just a moment to show you. First you find, they have 145,000 templates for anything you want. You go in, you then take that template and then you can uh, edit it and then come up with a final uh, item. Uh, just so you know, you can buy a poster for a set amount, uh, a photo quality download for three bucks. Uh, it's free, but there'll be a watermark on it. They do have some videos, they're more expensive, uh, and uh, uh, the watermarks are bigger because they wanna, uh, videos are more expensive to put together. Uh, and I'll show you that it, as well. Uh, but they do have a monthly and a uh, uh, a monthly and a year uh, a yearly fee that you can pay quarterly or by the year, and it's fairly steep. It's about ten bucks a month uh, quarterly. It's a little bit less than that if you do it yearly. And it's about 30 bucks if you want the premium plus, which is unlimited downloads. You get three credits and you can get, you get extra credit. You, you, get the, you get free credits every month, whether you use it or not, and you can build them up. They don't go away. However, uh, if you're going to do a lot, you might uh, uh, need the premium plus if, if you're working for a company or if the, the organization uses a lot of flyers different ones and so on, well then they obviously need to have uh, to pay it for you, but you can do them, you can get the credit for doing it and do a nice job. So how do you do it? Let's take a look. There's a website, it's called Poster My Wall, and it's, believe it or not, it's called PosterMyWall.com. You can sign in. And I'm not sure if I'm signed in here as me or whether I'm going to need to. Yes, I signed in to me. So I've already created a free account. Now, I let's say uh, I can search any of the templates. Let's go ahead and search for a birthday. And what you'll see is Oh, let's see, I hit, hit enter. Yeah. There we go. And you can see there's all kinds. But just to, to find a simple one, let's take this one. So when I click on it, okay, it says okay, and then it's customized template, and I click on it.
Now, no program is installed. I'm doing this all online. So now here is the, well, let's say uh, we're going to do this. Not, I, I don't want Danielle. I don't know a Danielle, but let's see. I need to move this out of the way here. Something on my screen that you can't see. Okay, let's, uh, let's change the color of the letters and let's make it blue. With this large arrow now, it's causing me a problem, but uh, let's find, there we go. And we'll come up here. All right, let's take this. So we're gonna change the letters to that. And we're going to say, okay. And we'll backtrack this and we'll say Stan <laughs> Walner. Okay, and because we changed that to blue and this this was the same color, so we're gonna change that background now to Let's go ahead and change that to blue and change this to blue and bingo. We've changed that. And uh, let's say uh, it's not going to be October 11th. Let's say it'll be June 11th. And instead of the apple cider center, whoops, I moved that out of the way here. Uh, And I know Stan likes to go to the Golden Rail. And uh, let's stick a little picture of Stan on here that I've got. So what we're going to say is, uh, uh, let's see, I want to uh, do a plus. I want to add a photo from my photos. And I got to go out and find one. So I know I've got one. Let's see, let's make this so it's not full screen so I can bring this. And I got a photo here. There's a photo of Stan. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take this and we'll just bring it up here. There it is. And now we'll just resize it to make it small. We'll stick it. Uh, we'll stick it on this side because he's looking in that direction. Want to hear something funny, Huey? Yes. I am wearing the same shirt. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. And 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 now the picture is is over the. Uh, that's so why I'm going to say bring uh, bring this to front. And let's see what else is needs to come to the front. Oops. Well, I moved it around here. Uh, now we're gonna send it to the back now. There we go. And send this to the back. There we go. And now I can say, uh, uh, it's gonna be 24 by 36, solid color, background is white, which is good. And then all I have to do is say, uh, let's see, I gotta move this back out of the way again. Text say, okay, we're fine. We could put music in the background and so on. So we're going to say file and save it. I can share it with friends. It's been, uh, I can tell it to download. I'm going to tell it, to, I want the free download. Close this. Open this. And there it is. So if you need to do a poster, how, how much easier can it be? Really? Like, and, did you right click and print from there? Well, it's now a photo. It's, it's now a JPEG on my computer. Whatever you do to print a JPEG, you can do. You'll notice down here it's got a very small uh, watermark that's saying it came from poster my wall. Uh, it probably is not legal to edit that out, but you probably could. 
because uh, it's a JPEG and you uh, you now have that JPEG, but it certainly should be included and give them the credit for it. Uh, but it's that easy to make some kind of a poster in any kind of, and as I say, they have 145,000 templates in, in all kinds of topics. You can find it to do anything you want. I've done a few now. Uh, let's see if I can uh, go to edit, poster my wall. And um, there are some that I've done and I've played around with. Uh, here is a video and you'll notice uh, you don't see it here, but there is a large uh, watermark that goes right in this area here, and it's, it, it jumps out at you. But you can do a whole video as well uh, using theirs, and if it's something you're going to use, then I would say most likely you need to pay for it. Uh, so, uh, uh, But I just thought it was a great find, and I know a lot of people – have trouble putting these kinds of things together for their groups, and this is a great way to do it. So I hope that helps uh, uh, some of you. Uh, some of you are in user groups. Maybe uh, you, you'll be able to use it for some of your meetings, or you can you can create posters that you can then post on Facebook uh, as a as some kind of a picture promoting an activity or an event or even just a meeting using that. Okay, let's see. Well, how are we doing on time, Stan? Uh, what have you decided you're doing for your main meeting? We haven't discussed that yet. Okay, I have a, a video at the end of this that I, after we stop the recording, I'm going to go ahead and show you. It might spark some conversation amongst you before I sign off. So okay. hang in there. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this article, let's go ahead and full screen this back up. Uh, Microsoft may move beyond Windows. For those of you who are interested, take a look at this article. It's saying that, well, you know, Windows isn't always going to be around. This is the last version of Windows. They just keep up updating Windows 10, but that may not last forever. There's th changes in the uh, technologies and so on. And so uh, this article kinds of guesses at some ways that Microsoft may be headed. So just a, an article of it might be of interest. Uh, I've got some best free Windows repair tools and some ways to speed up Windows 10 uh, uh, that you can go to. How to download Facebook videos without any software. Uh, a lot of you use Facebook. And a lot of times there's some kind of a little video on there that you would like to download and, and you don't know how to do it. Well, here's how you can. If you found some amazing or funny or cool videos on Facebook and you're looking uh, to download them, you can't really download them. And a lot of times you can't share them. But if you download it and then re-upload it, uh, then you can have it on your timeline or if you just want to show it to your friends and so on, uh, you can download. So really it's frustrating when you come across a, a, an awesome video on Facebook and then you can't save it to your computer. So here's how you can do it. First of all, find a video which you want to download. Then you right click on the video and select the third option which is show video URL. And this is what it's going to look like. Show video URL. Copy that URL from the little box. And when you do, it will, you want to copy it, and it's then going to put that in your, uh, in the clip box. Now go to your browser and open a new tab, then paste the video URL in the address bar. But hang on there. Don't click on anything. Change web or www to m basic as shown below notice here it says https web.facebook.com or in this one uh, or if it's www.facebook.com change that to m basic.facebook.com with the same information after it when you do that 
click on the uh, click on the video to open it in a new window. When you do that, then right mouse click, and you'll see the option to save video as. And when you do that, finally give it a name that you want because it's going to be big. It's going to be long numbers. And then choose the destination, or it's probably going to go to your uh, download folder. And hit the save button. Once you do that, it'll download it, and you'll have that on your computer. That's only from Facebook. It doesn't work with YouTube. I've tried it. Uh, YouTube is a totally different ball game. They don't want you to download them, and there's a third party third party programs you have to use, and I use one that costs money. So, but that's just Facebook, and that's how you can save a video in Facebook. Now I hope that helps you. Thank you. And then I had an article in the newsletter on what a pause key is, so I don't need to go on uh, into it here. Uh, but that pause key has been on keyboards uh, since the mid-80s. It's not really used for anything, but there are some things that it, you can do with that key uh, using the window key and the pause key, or if you're in a DOS prompt, what you can do with it. And that's what that article talks about. So those are my items. Do we have any questions? Let me see if I can find my chat box. I got a couple of things in the chat box. That I, let's see. Uh, Mike, uh, Norm said, got to go. Thanks, Huey. And then Mike said, remember Print Shop, one of the earliest graphic template programs going way back. The idea isn't new, but poster my wall has brought it up to date. I think I'd search for freeware or shareware first before buying this unless I had a specific use. Uh, yeah, but you'd have to install then a program, uh, Mike, where this is all done online. You don't have to inst You can run it using any browser on any computer. You can use it on your Chromebook. You can use it on your uh, uh, using Linux. As long as you've got a browser and you can get to the website, you can be using it. So you don't have to buy, and you don't have to download any software. Uh, and usually, they you're not going to have 145,000 templates to play around with, uh, with any program uh, 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 that that's out there. Okay, I don't see anything else. Stan, any questions from the people there? Anyone? Looks like not. Okay, hang in there while I. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, this is Dick. Uh, say, I found uh, on the uh, Dell website, if you're concerned, if you have a Dell computer and you're concerned about being able to update to 1903, they have a list of computers that they have tested out uh, and confirmed that they work with 1903 without a problem. Okay, we're getting some feedback because of the speaker there, because uh, you're on your computer and you're in the same hall. But uh, yeah, uh, Dell has a list of computers, is what Dick said, that will update uh, to Windows uh, 1903. You might want to check with your brand of computer as well to see if it supports it. Uh, but in most cases, uh, Windows will be able to tell you that or if it installs, it, it should work. By all means, and I did this, and this is why I, I did, I forced the update when I did, because I had just backed up using uh, a Cronus True Image. I made an image, my C drive of my D drive of all my data. I made sure I had a, uh, the data was updated and, and up to date uh, in the cloud in my, uh, and my I drive, which is the, uh, uh, the one drive, I should say, which is the Microsoft one. What I hit here, I hit something that I don't need. Uh, the, uh, oh, I know what I did. I got to move this out of the way now. It's thunder. Uh, Hang on one second. I want to get this back up. Oops, I hit the wrong thing. Oh, nuts. Be patient with me, folks. 
There we go. I want this on the screen. Uh, what was I talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought when I hit the wrong button. Anyway, uh, this takes care of the Computer Society Windows Special Interest Group for June 9th, 2019. Uh, hang in there for a moment while I stop the recording. <laughs>